Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I'm out here tinkering around in the garage. And I'm going to take this old uh, refrigerator compressor and uh, turn it into a vacuum pump for when I'm working on AC systems. It's cheaper than going out and spending a couple hundred bucks on an actual uh, vacuum pump. Um, just got to get it wired up. So the wiring, the way this typically works is you'll have like a couple of orange wires, a white wire, and a blue wire. That's most. But what you're going to have is this white wire and one of these orange wires are going to come to your uh, starting capacitor, which looks like that guy right there. Um, so if you're tearing a compressor out, make sure you save that. Um, and then your blue wire will go to the other end of your uh, you know, AC voltage. And then this, one of the oranges goes over to the starting capacitor, and this will go to the other end of your AC voltage. And then we'll hook that up, and we'll see which of these tubes, you know, sucks. And then I've got, uh, I'll figure out where I put it. <laughs> it's uh, eluding me at the moment, but I have a fitting that I can solder onto the pipe that brings this out to a flare fitting to hook my gauges up to. And I'm going to try to build a little wood platform for it to sit on. And then I'll be able to grab this. Um, this one here, if you can find one that's 134A. They, they do make refrigerators that run on R134A. That's so much the better. If it runs on 22 or Puron, it'll still work. You just could run into issues where the, like, the oil they use in um, 22 is not going to be compatible with the oil that's used in 134. So if you get some of that oil coming back when you're vacuuming out a system, it could turn it into a slush thing in there. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It'd probably be fine. And, you know, there's plenty of old refrigerators people are throwing away. I actually have this smaller one down here, too. And I thought about using that one. But um, that's not. That's an R22. And this one's a 134A. So I'm going to go with the 134A one. Um, just because that's what the same refrigerant that cars use so I can if I want to put some oil in this guy I can just put some pag oil in there um, I believe I might have to check because there's certain types of pag oil that are non-conductive That may have to be used in this if the wires are exposed inside So I have to double check and see what kind of oil I put in here But it will definitely be an oil that's compatible with 134 So I'll uh, go ahead and get this wired up and go test it and see if it works and then I'll be back then. We're all wired up here now. Here is the capacitor. It just those two terminals, it doesn't matter which order you put these two wires on. Um, and then you basically got whatever your white connection is here goes to one end of this capacitor you'll have this run orange wire runs to the capacitor and the other orange wire runs to one of your AC inputs and the other blue wire runs to an AC input and I just have the ground blocked off for now when I'm done I'll find a way to attach that ground here on the compressor somewhere so you have like three sets of lines on these this one here is what you use to, you know, charge or back down the system. This is the service port. And so what you would do is cut this, solder on another piece, typically. Then you could do your service, and then when you're done, you'll crimp this down real tight to seal it off. Um, these are the lines you're going to want. Your thinner line is going to be your high-pressure side. That's where it's going to blow out. Your thicker line, which is your low-pressure side, is going to be where it sucks in at. So I'll go ahead and plug this in here now. Trying to do it one handed. Alright, there we go. I hear it running. And so, now on this one, there's air coming out. And on this one is the vacuum. I can feel it drawing a vacuum. So now what I have is this little Schrader valve here, 
that I got from China is going to go on here. And I'm just going to solder that in place. I'll take out this little bounce stem with this bounce stem removal tool. And then we'll solder that piece of pipe into place. Just clean the copper all real good. Heat it up with the torch and melt some solder in there. Um, and then uh, we'll have a vacuum pump. I'll probably leave the Schrader out on this guy because it won't normally be needed. I'm not trying to stop pressure from coming out. It's just going to be a vacuum port um, that hooks to the hose on my gauges. So hopefully, I'll show you when I get this all soldered up. So here it is. It's plugged in and it's running. And I've got my vacuum gauge hooked up to it. And I just went ahead and capped off my low pressure side. I opened that valve. And you can see it is pulling a real nice vacuum there. Um, which that 30 rating is like near perfect vacuum. So it's just pulling it and holding it just like you would want. So this will come in really, um, this is going to come in real handy for me because um, I have one of those Venturi Harbor Freight vacuum things and it works on my compressor but it's really noisy and it runs the crap out of my compressor and sometimes you want to let a system just sit and back down for a half hour 45 minutes to make sure you have all the moisture out of it. So this will allow me to do that. But if you need a vacuum pump that's quiet and uh, cheap, you might consider getting yourself one of these. I'm going to put a little more heat shrink down around these two connectors here just to make sure that uh, it's a little more insulated to protect against accidental shock because <laughs> there is 120 volts there. Um, but yep, she's working. So I'm going to mount this in a neat little wood frame here eventually and just make it so I can pick it up and carry it to your car. Alright, so here it is, kind of all finished up. I just made this little wooden uh, platform for it. I've got a little handle up here so that I can carry it. <laughs> I'm not much of a woodworker. I fastened it in with some bolts and washers on the bottom. And then uh, I got the uh, ground wire all hooked up and it's in there now. There's my capacitor, my wiring. I got a nice long cord on it. And uh, I can use this handle to pick it up and move it around. Uh, so that's how to build pretty much a free, um, you know, vacuum pump to work on AC with. You know, as an old refrigerator somebody was throwing away, I ripped the compressor out of it. I got the starting capacitor too, don't forget to get that. You know, old extension cord I used for this power cord. And you could probably cut the power cord off the fridge too. A little bit of heat shrink and some connectors and just some scrap wood that I had laying around to build a little carrying frame for it. And I guess the only thing I really had to buy was this thing from like Hong Kong or China on eBay. I'll put a link to it down below. But, uh, you know, that was like a dollar or something shipped. So, uh, nothing there. They call those uh, AC service ports if you're looking for them online. But, uh, Yep, she's all ready to go. So now when I need to work on an AC system and vac it down, um, I don't have to have a big noisy Venturi Harbor Freight vacuum pump deal that runs the crap out of my air compressor. Also with this being quiet, if you have a little uh, leak somewhere, you might be able to hear it when it's vacuumed down. Where with that Venturi one going, you can't hear nothing. So you don't have to go and spend you know $150 on one you can build your own and if it burns up there's plenty of more refrigerators out there that you can probably steal a compressor out of i'll talk to y'all later this is tom your frugal prepper